Here are the D-bit levers explained. Here's your scale for your rotational axis. That's to lock up the 5C collet. Put it in, line up the pin and then just lock it in. But now, you have the scale. To loosen the scale, undo that nut and then you can rotate it to your position. Now, if you push it in the vertical position, you can then rotate it plus or minus 90. So that's how you set the job up, touch it, then just spin it back 90, 180, 90, 180. Now, if you then just put the lever in the engaged position there, it is now 10 and two and a half so twelve and a half twelve and a half no sorry fifteen fifteen when I'm talking about two two and a half so it's fifteen degrees so each step is fifteen degrees there's that one that's the clearance one over there so you can spin it three there three sixty put it back and it'll click into the uh, it's 15 position, so 15. So that can't move. So if you put your collet in and line it up with the pin, I sometimes use the groove in the collet to get the verticals. So this is out a bit, so you have to set it up a different way for your verticals. So let's undo. And do as lock and roll. This is setting up your D bit when you're going to grind the flat and you've roughed it out and you want it to sit vertical. This lever here is supposed to just touch it on the side of the flat of your roughly ground and then that will get it vertically then you've had this set up to your angle so you put it in there lock it put it up with the pin nip this up rock and roll your bit so as it lines up with that lever then lock that in position then just switch it over to be the 180 just put it in there and away you go. Now, the other adjustments, this knob here starts to tilt this in or out. So that's your feed. So every cut, you got to wind it in, wind it out, wind it in, wind it out. It's a pain in the ass. You can rough it out, but I found that if you pull it down and back up, this can unloosen a bit, so I'm going to make an arm on here with a stop, maybe even a dial indicator, and then when it comes back you can see. Because if you gouging out a centre of a drill or something like that in the flutes, uh, the odd bit is that you can't really do it this way, you can only do it that way, I'll show you in a minute why. And you move it in so you have to set your in cut that way and, and then take your cut that way so you can't slide this <laughs> in and out it only slides this direction so this is you want to look at it you have to move it that way you can't move it that way but you can't really take a cut in there and go back when you're trying to move up to a surface so you have that problem but I'll show you the other attachments and levers what they do there's your 
tilt. Now, it has all these type of handles on it. Trouble is, this bottom bugger here is that tight. You have to get a pipe on it, so I just use a wrench. A um, ratchet and socket on there to undo, because it's that bloody tight. So to move this along, you have to undo this main one. It's got the split. And then manually push it in. So you have to wobble it along till you get where you think it's supposed to go. Now the problem with that is, normally the rotational axis is on the bottom, and the roll axis is sort of in here. So you said, oh yeah, I want 45, you'll swing it there, then I'll tilt it back. But this you tilt it back first, and then you put your 45, so it's sort of, it sits on a funny angle in space. It's very hard then to line it up by eye to check your angles. So you may have your cutter in there and you move it along and you won't want to take a second cut. So you have to then undo everything and try wobbling it and then if you adjust it it actually changes the position in space of your tool. So it may have been away there a mil but by the time you adjust it, it could be five mil over here so you have to then adjust it all again. These travels are not very great. That's probably the limit of your travel, five mil, ten mil, nothing, nothing major. So a lot, a lot of your time you have to try wobbling wobble this backwards and forwards. So that's the lock to lock that shaft. That that one on the bottom is the tight one that undoes that and that's how you slide it along and get your rough tilting angle. The center one is to tilt the angle and as you can see the scales it's all made for this direction you've got this angle it goes from 0 to 90 so this only moves from there to there so if you've got a V cutter a double V cutter so you put it on that side to cut it so you swing it there on 45 and you grind that but when you want to grind this other 45 shape you can't you can't get over and you can't rotate it because if it's a D bit fine but it is if it's on a say a shaft and you've got a 45 angle that way and that way you can swing it here but it only goes straight you can't swing it around the other way to get the other face so it is a pain so they are limited also the scales they're only two degrees. You have the big fat line for a guesstimate. Same here, two degrees. The feeds 0.01. You can actually do double feeds. This is a feed to move the whole carriage across, whole assembly across. And that one moves the work head in and out. And you can lock it there if you wish. That's just on with the light. And then that's the motor start. What else is there? Uh, I had the diamond dresser fits in there. It's got roller bearings in it. And the idea is that you just, with your stone wheels, it just dresses across like that. But also, I think you're better off with a parallel wheel with cutting grinding surfaces on both sides. Then you can swing it forward and back. So you can put it on that side, swing it on that side. So, what do you need to do? You need to scribe a few center lines so here you can line jobs up by eye. Now, some of the other unique things about this. The forward and back movement, there's no scale, just this thumb screw that's got a sliding nut that's locked in position with that lock nut. Now in that nut it's round and it's got a slot in it, that pin fits in the slot so the movement can go so far. But if you undo that and wind out the whole thing comes out and when I put in the ER32 
5C adapter. Uh, it was sticking out about this far and instead of being a sort of reasonably straight cut it's this heads over so it's rubbing like that which means if you're cutting up there this part is almost touching your collet. If you grind here that's equal. So that, that's a drawback. And another drawback is most of the uh, this is a 5C adapter which I recommend rather than the R8 style but the most common size of uh, engraving D bit is the 3 mil 1 8 of an inch solid carbide you get a set of metric and imperial collets but no 3 mil no quarter no 1 8 of an inch so that's the problem there One of the other adjustments, this can also grind radiuses, radii. So that's the lock nut to move it in and out. That's the lock nut. What's that? Yeah, that's a lock nut to move this in and out. And that's the lock nut to lock the, the screw. So the slide's got a lock nut <laughs> and the thread has got a lock nut and if you undo that one this will come out and this will fall out on your hand. So always have that one nipped up. I think you can just get a bit of a rough movement. So you might have 15 mil of thread, 10 mil, 10 mil slot so you can move this 25 mil. That's the idea of it. So that's a lock nut to move it in and out, and that's the other lock screw there. Now this one here, this is the this is a good one. Here, this is the other lock nut to move the dovetail in and out. And if we sc scoot around here, you see it's got a scale in there. Zero, plus 15, minus 15. So, you can actually grind a radius, and the, and the way that works is there's your pivot point, the center of this axis, and this will rotate around. So if you put your job in there and it's a D bit, say it's three mil and I want to put a radius on that, I can then just set it up on zero, move it across the thickness and the radius. So that's what that scale is. And then to get the center point, that also needs to be in there. And you move it forward or back. So that depends on where, where you want the radius to be. Positive or negative, concave or convex and all that sort of crap. So that's what that adjustment for is. But as you can see, there's no setting gauge, no setting hole. You can't put a pin in there wind your cutter up and touch it half that way and that way and make it easier. So it does these things, well it has the potential to do these things but not without a lot of headache. So you undo that lock nut and screw that in and out and it can slide in and out as well. But that also helps get a bit more clearance if you've locked this up and it's you know, two mil out, you can just undo that and drag it across and then get your clearance. And like most of these machines I see in the buy, they have a nice, well this one's got a nice LED light, but when you're trying to see what you're doing, it can't, the tool will sit there, but the light is <laughs> going that way. So you can't bend it around to point in the direction of what you're cutting. So you would look at the bit and see what it is. So all it does is it lights up the wheel and the back of the job you're grinding. So one of my jobs will be make a riser block and have this sitting in the right position. You know. It just seems to be common these days. So that's about it. That's a, the wheel on it and as you can see runs out, that's the only face it's been touching on, 
So you, you can't true them up, you, you can't tell them to run this way, you can't face them off. So you just wear them down. But for one half green, just under one half green, that's what you get. My job is to fix up this D bit. See if I'll focus on it. Here it's chipped. That's a 45. So I will set that up and do that another day. So that's just the overall look at it. And just get me to remember how and what everything does. <laughs>